Okay, now we're going to talk about quadratic equations and we'll start off talking about simple quadratic equations. Sometimes we have an equation that we need to solve and the equation has a perfect square in it like this, nine. So x squared equals nine. And these are fairly easy to solve. All we do is take the square root of each side and the square root of x squared is x and the square root of nine is three and we don't forget to include the plus and the minus. We get a positive and a negative solution in this case. Now whenever we solve an equation that's in this form, x squared equals something, we'll say x squared equals k, and k could be any number. There's three possibilities. k could be positive, or it could be negative, or it could be zero. And so let's talk about these three possibilities for just a second. Three possibilities. One, k is positive. I'll write it like this. k is greater than zero. And two, if k is equal to zero, three, k is less than zero. Those are the only possibilities. x squared is equal to something. That something has to be either positive or negative or zero. Well, if it's positive, like we had here, we get two real number solutions. In this case, positive three and negative three. So in this case, if we solved this, whatever number k was, the solutions would be the positive square root of k and negative square root of k. If k is equal to zero, then that's the, the real simple case. You just have x squared equals zero, then x equals zero is your solution. But the point here is that we have one, one real number solution in that case, and it's gonna be x equals zero. And if k is less than zero, like if you had this, x squared equals negative five, there is no number x that you can square and get negative five, no real number. No number on the number line squared is going to give you a negative number because squaring a number always gives you a positive number. So in this case, there are no real number solutions. So you either have two solutions, one solution, or none. And those are your three possibilities. Now we'll work through some examples. Here's the first example. That's actually two examples. But part A, we're told x squared is equal to 64. We just take the square root of each side and you get x equals eight. Just don't forget the plus or the minus. It's pretty common to forget that. Just saying x equals eight isn't quite correct. There really are two solutions in this case and you should name both of them in your answer. This next one, two x squared equals 98. This one's not too bad. We just want to divide both sides by two, and the twos cancel out, and we're left with x squared equals 98 over two, which is 49. So the thing that is squared, x in this case, is now isolated, and now we can square root each side. And when you take the square root of the left and the square root of the right, you get x equals plus or minus seven. Now the thing that is squared, in both of these it was just an x that's squared, but the thing that is squared doesn't have to be a simple variable. It could be an expression like x minus two or something like that. Um, in this case we have x plus three squared equals 64. The same technique will work. We can take the square root of each side. And when I do the square root of the left and the square root of the right, the square root of something squared is just that thing. So when I take the square root of x plus three squared, I just get x plus three. So the left side is x plus three and the right side is plus or minus eight. So I'm, I'm not done, I need to solve for x, but I can do that pretty easily from here. I can just subtract three. And if I subtract three from the left, I have to subtract three from the right. And on the left, those cancel out, and I'm left with x, and now it's solved for x, and I get plus or minus eight minus three. Now, what does that mean? Well, this means that this eight could be a positive eight or a negative eight. I can work this out once with a positive eight and once with a negative eight. I get two answers. So x is really positive eight minus three, or it's negative eight minus three. So positive eight minus three is five, 
and negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11. So I get two answers, 5 and negative 11. Now, what does that mean? 5 and negative 11, two solutions. What that means is these are values for x which satisfy this original equation. And the original equation didn't have the radicals there. So I should be able to take 5 and plug it in there for x and have a true statement. And same thing with negative 11. I should be able to take negative 11 and plug it in there for x. So let's check these and see if these solutions do work. I'll start off with the 5. I'm going to check 5. I'm going to rewrite this equation, but instead of an x right here, I'll write a 5 and see if it works. So I'll write 5 plus 3 squared is 64. I just took the original equation, but I put a 5 in there for x. Well, 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 squared is 64, and that works. Let's also check the negative 11. I'm going to take this equation and rewrite it, but instead of the x right there, I'll put a negative 11. So let's check negative 11. So here we go. Negative 11 plus 3 squared equals 64. Is that true? Well, what's negative 11 plus 3? Negative 11 plus 3 is negative 8. That's in parentheses. Negative 8 squared, does that equal 64? It sure does. Negative 8 times negative 8 is 64. So both of those solutions, check out, both of those satisfy the original equation. And those are the solutions and the only two solutions.